Hey guys, really quick before we get into this episode, we want to announce that we're finally on Apple Podcasts after full podcast six guys. months. Yeah, I don't know what took so long, but we're there weird. now. It was super weird. I had to like link my Apple account or my Apple ID with whatever bullshit. But um, I know there's uh, at least Kyle uh, K- Kaidola listens uh, says he prefers Apple Podcasts. So if if you know if you prefer that over Spotify, then it's it's available there on Apple Podcasts. So. And welcome new Apple podcasters. Yep. Enjoy the episode. If you're in platinum below, all you do is team deathmatch. No one knows how to fucking play the game. Everyone's jerking yeah, off yes. like a bunch of monkeys and a ramming it right down the middle mid lane. Welcome everybody. It is that time again for according to low elo. And, um, Once again, we are here to brighten your week and hopefully your morning. If you're catching this in the morning, uh, if not in the morning, hopefully your evening for the YouTube, uh, watchers. You're going to see something brand spanking new. And for the audio listeners, I'll tell you. You've already seen it. For the audio listeners, you've yeah. already seen it. <laughs> That's true. It's uh, our profile photo now. But uh, we have fucking art finally. Yes, we do. And yes, we do. And it's fucking awesome. As you can see, Tyler is Thresh and I am by. Fucking looking good. Um, yep. We've been wanting art for a while. And it, it was kind of slow and... We weren't sure what we wanted, really, but we we landed on an artist, and she did a fucking amazing job. And yeah, at Julia Nev on Instagram. Yeah, I got her on the screen. Right um, now. awesome artist. Um, she does a really good job with portraits. That's kind of like her thing. Yeah. Um, and I kind of was cruising her page. I didn't see she hasn't done anything really like this necessarily. Um, and she fucking killed yeah, it. She knocked that out of the park. Up. He killed it. So, please. Thank you, Julia. Yeah, please go follow her on Instagram. Uh, also, she's on Etsy. It's uh, yes, Julia Etsy Nev up. Art. Please, yes. please, please, please. Highly recommended for anyone who's looking for portraits. Um, seriously, Julia, thank you if you're listening to this. Um, you're probably not, but that's okay. That's okay. We still uh, appreciate you. And then with that, we are finally launching our Twitter. Uh, the Twitter should be up and ready by the time this episode goes off, goes out. <laughs> and it is at A-T-L-E pod. So come on, follow us. We'll be posting there updates, random shit, uh, maybe gameplay clips. I'm not sure. We we could probably do a lot of shit. Um, we'll figure it out for it. So, yeah, you can follow us there now and uh, for updates, et cetera, et cetera. All righty. So we're going to get into, before we actually get into the episode... We want to go and check out our polls and questions we had asked in the prior two episodes. We have two episodes to go over. On the last patch episode, on episode 21, we had a poll asking, what was your rank at the end of season 11? And I want to say thank you to the 22 people who voted. Yeah, and 22 people, let's go. Let's go. So we're going to look at uh, the majority at 36% was gold. So I, I, that makes me feel better <laughs> that that our listeners are about the same uh, rank as us in scheme yeah. uh, skill level. So that makes me no, feel that's, good. <laughs> that's actually really awesome because um, you're who we're you're our target audience. So that means whatever we're doing, we're hitting the right mark somewhere. So um, if you guys have any other feedback, please throw it our way. But congratulations to you, Golders, that got your Blitzcrank skin. This colder did not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Don't be Tyler. Did not know you needed to have honor level two. I uh, probably could have played more games and got that. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm not that butthurt. Let's crank would have been cool, but would have been my first gold skin. That would have been cool. But that's right. I got next season. Next I got season. my TFT triumphant and TFT gold. So we're good there. Um, I did see that there are 5% of you that are platinum. That should be that's astronomical. Twenty two votes. That should be one or two people, which is awesome. Thank you. Hello. Astronomical. And I see fourteen percent of you didn't play ranked at all. You're smart. Um. Yeah. You're fucking smart. <laughs> I, I, I would venture to say one of those is probably Kaidola, who plays Aram most of the time, like ninety percent of the time. I think the other one is Ran. Oh, well, one of them is Ran. Yeah, okay. would be Ran. Yeah. Um. Exactly. Zero percent of you are Iron. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, 27% bronze, 18% silver. So 
really we're nailing that target audience between bronze and gold. And we had that little bit of pepper from platinum. Um, probably has to do with one of our earlier interview episodes, which if you haven't listened to guys, uh, for all you new listeners, check out that interview episode. Um, it was really fun, really interesting. I learned a lot. Um, I believe it's episode nine released on September 13th. Yeah. Um, check it out. I think you guys will like it. It's a uh, definitely an interesting or different, a different pace for us. Yeah, for sure. So again, thank you for those people on that poll. And then the question we asked was, what do you think is the most broken addition or change that came to preseason? And William replied and said, from my short experience so far, the new glacial augment is pretty busted with the slow zones, but Axiom Arc on Nocturne is insane too. Three alts in one minute. Yeah, I I think I originally was telling you about glacial... Video. It's oh, oh I thought you were going to go with the Nocturne. Okay, the Nocturne <laughs> too. But <laughs> no, yeah, okay, the Nocturne clip is just him alting three yes. times in one team fight. Fucking great job. That Can I just say fuck that item by the way? That item I I'm surprised didn't get hot fixed. Um there are so many champions building that item and it's fucking game breaking. We'll not even into- not even AD users too. Like like you're yeah. going to see We'll go. We'll go more into that. There, there is a few comments. Um, Twenty five seconds. No. Yeah, it's come on. Just lower it a little bit. Maybe ten that's seconds. Twenty five percent. Uh, seconds. There's a percent. Oh, you're right. No, you're right. It's twenty five percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, we'll get in there. We'll get in there. Um, what about uh last week's episode? What do we? Where do we land on? Right, 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 right. Oh. Let's go back. It had to do, I believe, with uh, it was Arcane. Yes, correct. Arcane episode. When did you start playing League of Legends? Before Arcane, or during, or after Arcane was released? Six of you said you've been playing since before Arcane. Three of you said you've been playing during or after. That's that's impressive. So you guys found our podcast after Arcane yeah. or during Arcane. That's fucking awesome. That's really awesome. So I appreciate Thank that. You for- for, for coming in thanks for sticking around thanks for uh hanging out and and being with us really <laughs> that's awesome we appreciate each and every one of you even though we don't know all of you individually but no seriously thank you guys um the question we had last week was what did you want to see in season two of arcane um or or who or what do you want to see in season two sorry excuse me let me put that out there uh gideon dot enoch exclaimed warwick he's coming he's for he's sure coming. coming we know he's coming he's coming um ryan said she needs blitz but would also like to see ionia in general and i agree with that i think it would be interesting to tie ionia in well uh, i think if noxus is going to get involved we might see the nox in- okay. invasion yeah yeah possibly it would be interesting to see um yeah, so possibly Yoni, depending on where this lands at the we time don't frame. Need those goddamn oh, cancer coming. champions, dude. You you can't tell me that Yasuo is not like the perfect fucking anime character. He is basically Roni Kenshin, realistically. <laughs> um, and Seawood one twenty two said, "I know very little about League of Legends, but I saw the character Camille. Learned that she's connected to Piltover, and thought that would be cool." Also, Seraphine, just to make people mad, which is insane because if you know very little and you know that Seraphine pisses everybody off, I feel like you know enough, my guy. Why I feel the like- fuck you lying? <laughs> so thank you guys for your responses again. Um, it's great to hear from you. Uh, always interesting to hear those different uh, takes and ideas on, on what's going on. So thank you. Um, but let's get into this week, guys. Uh, I made a post on Reddit, and this is going to be our question for the week for you as well. Um, My post basically reads, and if you're reading this uh, on video, I apologize for reading it to you, but for you audio listeners, uh, the general question is, what are your thoughts on preseason so far? Um, I threw out a couple conversation starters under the idea. So, you know, I'm curious to know the thoughts of, of all the players. On the preseason so far, do you like the new items? Do you like the new runes? How do you feel about the item changes like Abyssal Mask? How do you feel about the build path changes like Hextech Alternator? Um, how do you feel about the current meta? 
what champions are you finding that are OP and what champs are you finding to be weaker than anything? Just these are general conversation starters. You don't have to follow that exact format. Um, but it's just something to get you in the way of kind of thinking. I don't want to say where I want you to think, but get you into that no, mindset. I got you. I mean, you don't necessarily have to answer every question. No, just you, you might answer, you might see one in particular that you want to answer. You know, you feel more passionate about. Or if there's uh, a different question that I didn't mention that's related, bro, shout it out. Alrighty, so the question for this week is: What are your thoughts so far in preseason? And our poll is: What do you think is the most? I don't necessarily want to say OP, but the most impactful role or lane for yeah. for for this meta that we're about to enter. Um, yeah. So we. Look forward to hearing from you. Well, let's get into it, dude. Start me off with Doom Man 44. Pretty mild and boring, except Chem Tank is literally broken. I'm assuming he's referring to the the map. No, is is he referring to the map? I'm assuming the item. I think the item. Okay. Uh it literally just doesn't work. Oh, okay. Tons of <laughs> bugs. <laughs> it should also have a cooldown so inting scion plays don't work. Okay, see, that's what I'm confused at. I think he means the Drake. Because uh, what would that have to do? What would the item have to do? With oh yeah, you're right. He said chem, later on, he says chem tank map also needs to be changed. Okay. 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 So tank gets worse every and season. Chem tech. Yeah, the chem tech. Broken. Got it. Got it. So yeah, the I've seen. I think I've seen a few videos where uh, it has weird interactions. If you have a GA or I think with the scion bug or the scion passive, where it the game probably just does not know what to do when you die twice. Um, <laughs> sounds it about right. It's extra hard, huh? Twice. So, what? I wonder what would pop first. I haven't tried it. Does his passive pop first, or does the dragon pop first? I think it's passive because then you don't hit gray screen until he's gone, and then when you hit gray screen, it should pop. <laughs> my thought. Oh, I fucking I hate this game. <laughs> right. All right. So tank uh, tank gets worse every season. Basically impossible to play effectively. Chem take map also needs to be changed. Winning teams basically cannot lose if they constantly invade. That I agree with. There was a clip of Cadrel explaining how this map is going to be really fucking hard for pro play. Like basically, if you're losing, and, and this is pro play, so this has nothing to do with us because we suck. <clears throat> for pro play, he's explaining how the 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 zones on the map. The only way you can see people in there is if there is a pink ward. Basically, if you're losing and you cannot. You cannot enter your jungle. You're gonna get fucked. You cannot see anything, and that's I, I kind of agree. It's that's fucking awful. You, it already feels bad if you're losing as a jungler and you feel like you can't go in your jungle. It's even worse <laughs> if like you literally cannot go in. Well, yeah, you jungle. you have to go in to put a pink ward, and that's very risky, Dangerous. and yeah. that could be cleared immediately. Yep, yep. yep. So those zones gotta go bye bye, or I don't know. They're they're kind of stupid. They they need to make the zones. Um, I don't know. They need to come up with something else. Camouflage isn't isn't the business. Um, they, I feel like that's just their. Oh, uh, what do we got to do? Make people go invisible. Got it. Like, it's either that or some nonsense with a three hit passive. <laughs> <laughs> Is they they re, they a three hit passive dog? They reach into a bag of like. Oh, what are we gonna do? And there's fucking two things in there. Three hits passive. Park episode where they make fun of the Family Guy and it's the manatees just like picking out jokes. Except it's... there's only two things they can pick from: invisibility and a three hit passive. Oh, that sounds terrible. So yeah, I the whole I think that's the biggest thing that a lot of the community is talking about is this Drake and the map. Um, I don't know, man. Maybe it, it may, maybe people are just already. They probably haven't played enough of it once it been out for two weeks now. Um, I'm sure once pros play it and people see how pros are playing it, they'll probably understand. But yeah, the general uh, consensus is uh, no it way sucks. Not. It sucks. Alrighty, so let's move on down to Fictitious1267. You want to go ahead and read this one? <laughs> I don't know what that means, but he said mythics were a failure. Um, I don't know if that's just a... <laughs> That because be... his tag or his like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um it says i feel like they put very little work into this season it's basically just a few add-ons for last season rather than something in and of itself 
And I think when you compare to last season when they changed over to Mythics, I can see that. I can agree with that. So there are only five new items, one of which is not worth using. Great that they opened up build choices for mages. They were supposed to do that a year ago. Uh, yeah, better late than never. Other <laughs> lanes haven't really gotten anything at all to mess with uh, keystones. Yeah, lethal tempo. Yeah, lethal tempo, first strike, and glacial augment are really the big ones. Yep. I feel oh, like yeah. their glacial change just made it more annoying, so they will nerf it until no one uses it and consider that balanced for the year. <laughs> yeah, it's they like specifically put it as a support item or a support keystone because it because it scales with your healing and shielding yeah i mean i'm sure you could take it on a tank but are you really gonna want because like it, it and the fact the that it gives damage on is fucking rel well i mean it's like or leona because you're in their face anyways it's like i'm stopping you from doing what you think you're gonna do and i'm going to be in your face about it yeah it's i mean but is it is it gonna be for tanks is it worth Instead of, I, f I feel like Aftershock, it, it comes down to, like, do you need to reduce the damage to your teammates? Because it, why the fuck does it have to give damage reduction? Um, I think that's situational. I think that's a situational pick between Aftershock or Glacial. Um, and this is why. Leona, great team fighting champion, right? If she goes in in a 5v5, she's probably not making it out with most of the other team, right? She's not she's not guaranteed to get out. Um so so are you suggesting you, glacial so will be better? Well, so what I'm thinking, this is my thought or my postulation. I haven't tried this yet, but from my experience with glacial, you go in or you ulti and you hit two or three people with that slow. Now you ulti, you can E flash Q somebody else. You can lock three people down. Um, and never take any damage and reduce the damage to your teammates uh, as opposed to reducing damage to yourself and, and letting out a little damage uh, poof. So I think it just has a different use. It's a... You're right, it is a battle between Aftershock and Glacial, but I think it's dependent on, on the team comp, right? If you're going against an assassin or a team more of assassins, I would probably go Aftershock because you're going to have a hard time hitting those assassins and proccing your glacial anyways. It's easier if you're Leone to just press a Q and then I don't take the damage that you think I'm going to take. What it comes down to is are you fighting a 5v5 team fight or are you fighting skirmishes? If you're fighting skirmishes, timing is everything and the 5v5, 5v5 team fight um, I feel like you can be a little more sloppy. I feel like Aftershock's probably better to 5v5 because you can damage everybody. Um, whereas if you're fighting these little skirmishes, these these 2v2s, 3v3s, being able to stun one person and slow the shit out of everybody else is pretty powerful, in my opinion. Plus the damage reduction. Plus the damage reduction. And generally those are going to be team fights fighting against like Yasuo's or Jace's or their fed top laner. Anything that's going to try to get past the front line to the back line? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, I don't think I I don't play that much support as it is, but I don't know. I I it's a lot of things that you just have to we'd have to test out and just I I, I played it with Morgana. That just seemed broken as shit. Yeah, no, you the land a slow kill zones. Else. Basically, yeah, if you hit someone with CC, they're not fucking moving cuz the, the slow zones are the three rays are fat and then there you is it 30% slow. I think something like that. Yeah, their friends ain't moving either. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. I feel like it's good on Leona. Like you fucking get in, you Zenith Blade in, and then you uh, Solar Flare down. You're gonna land the Solar Flare, and you're gonna land the stun, or someone's gonna flash. That's a win to me. So let's see. They so Glacial is more annoying. So they will nerf it until no one uses it. I I could see that happening. Uh, first strike and lethal tempo are weird in that they are too strong on some champs and far too weak on others. That is true. I the fact that melees can stack it and they get ninety percent attack speed. Just the whole Yasuo Yoni interaction where your Q is like up at one second if you have lethal. Yeah, it's just fucking broken. Dude. Level one, like that's that's kind of weird. 
I never played a good Yasuo game until I played it with New Lethal, and I was like, wow, this is dumb, because I suck at this fucking champion, and I'm fucking murking people. Um, I think the only good thing that it is for, for ranged, obviously the attack speed, but, but range you get 30% attack speed, is that extra 100 range. That yeah. feels fucking nice. Uh, so like on yeah. Jinx, Jinx or yeah. Caitlyn, like it's they short, really feels good on short range carries that are playing into long range carries like Caitlyn. Um, it feels good on long range carries that want extra range without having to buy an RFC. I mean, you could do that too, and you're fucking that but, one shot if you have it stacked is insane. Very well do that. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, and this is another one off. You know, my favorite little one offs uh, to see some more ADTFs. Or some some non like a lethal tempo TF or like a maybe a hybrid TF or whatever. It just dude, a long range gold card is fucking great. Like I don't care what anyone says, a long range gold card is fucking fantastic. Yeah, I think if you think about it, TF's the only mage in the game that would would want to build RFC. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of weird. That's a weird. It is weird. The fact that he literally builds a crit on him because he wants the passive. That's it. Oh, well, I guess the attack speed is nice. It's that worth it to him. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. For, okay, first strike. Yeah, it's... It's... I, it's So, like, the gold you get from the extra damage on range... I've only done it on range, champions. I think I actually... No, did I do it on GP? I don't think I even did it on GP yet. I've played games with Victor and TF and Lux. I did Lux game all with first strike, and I think I won every single game. The gold I guess really good on TF just because it was gold generation in general. The it's it's kind of weird because if you're going into another range champion, it's very easy for them to just because if they hit you first, that fucking goes on cooldown for twenty five yeah. seconds or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it's kind of annoying, but if you can get that first hit off and you do a little extra damage, like when I was playing Victor, all I was doing was just throwing my laser out and getting just one hit of the laser, and it's just like, okay, that's five gold, and then the tick does whatever damage, and it's like I get like nine gold every twenty seconds. But once you get into the mid game, if you have like an item or two, you're getting fucking gold, dude. Like it, it kind of accelerates your mid game to your late game. That's where it felt really good. Even the damage like amp off the pa- off it good on bursty champions so like, i want to I want to I wanna do i want to poke you to start like something that's good on tf it's like i'm gonna gold card you and then i'm gonna throw a q and then i'm gonna auto attack you you're done being gold card you know what i mean and you're gonna get that nice little buff a nice little bit of gold uh right back in your pocket yeah it's uh i could see them possibly buffing it early nerfing it late i don't know not I don't know what they could do with that. A um, gold drop of damage. Yeah, it's it's super. It's just it's very weak early. Um, you just gotta play really ec- extra safe. Or actually, sorry, if you're gonna buff it early and nerf it late, you buff the damage drop of gold because the gold scales harder than the damage does early. Yeah, because that's again mid game. It it accelerates if you're if you're doing if you don't even have to be ahead if you're even and you're getting that little extra gold every now and then then you know. It's, it's yeah, you're, feel nice. you're <laughs> if you're even and you're getting extra gold to your head uh, and then finally said the current meta is just team death match team death match perma fighting it's more fun than last season but the game doesn't feel like it has much strategy or coordination friend if you're in platinum below all you do is team death match no one knows how to fucking play the game everyone's jerking yeah, off yes. like a bunch of monkeys and a ramming it right down the middle mid lane a couple people responded to that comment First strike needs to go, lol. It's a very dumb rune, said Emily Koshamar. And Doomman44 replied, said, doesn't help that lethal tempo basically only makes Jinx unstoppable. I think I've seen lethal on Jinx is like the most successful thing I've seen. It's fucking stupid. Just because, one, it lets you exceed the attack speed limit, gives you the range, plus her passive stacks every time she gets a, a get excited. So... That attack speed bonus is fucking insane. Yep. <laughs> fucking, because it, you know, they decided to make it cap at 10 attack speed. Nice. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, so um, moving on down, we got at... Alphalus. Alphalus. I was going to say Atlas. Standard 
or season. He meant preseason, but he can't type, so he put or season. That's okay. Shook a few things up and let the guys know what the general reception would be for things like Crown and Axiom. It'll settle down for regular season start yet again. This is fun, though. I'm just embracing the silly builds right now until they nerf tanks as we go into LEC time. And you know what? I said this last time, too. Uh, the tanks should be fucking OP. We should be in a tank meta. We're not. We're because not. Axiom arc means assassins want to play the game. But all the tank items are fucking strong right now. But it's just it's just not it's you need damage. It's like fucking anarchy in this fucking game. That's all I'm saying. The whole game is fucking anarchy. Like that person said, it's just constant fighting, and whatnot, like just complete, absolute, no holes barred fucking jinx anarchy. And do you think they probably did this with the release of Arcane? Jinx blows the shit up and then all of a sudden the game's fucking anarchy? Yes, that sucks. They're gonna fucking nerf Jinx. They're gonna nerf Vi fucking um chatter crown that item is feels really fucking good and i mean good i mean broken i i look at the stats at the end of the game it's like oh reduce three thousand damage i'm like nice nice like it it's it is crown of the shattered queen there you go shattered butthole should be called yeah shattered this game fucked me up <laughs> This game's the reason I have trust issues because I trusted Riot to balance the game. I made a fucking mistake. I, I'm just kidding. I feel like Crown is okay just because it is a mythic and it should be a little bit more strong than a legendary. Whereas Axiom is just, oh, here's 25% off your alt cooldown on a takedown. That's fucking. Okay, that, dub. Uh, uh, it'll settle down for regular season yet again. Okay, that's fair. Um, it always does. It always does. He's got a point. It always does come back down during regular season, so. Plus, a lot yeah. of people, I think, are just over, like, freaking out about it right now. There's just a lot it's of time. Too, it's an easy thing to, to, to freak out over, for sure. Typical Reddit hive mind kind of thing, but, yeah. All right, well, let's move down to Nebicus. Okay. Nebicus said, Chemdrink map is awful. Yep. But I don't mind the rest of it. I like most of it, and Axiom slash Chem Dragon Soul are iffy. That is the thing. Yeah, you kind of... They're kind of echoing everybody else. Thank you, Nebicus. Um, Bra Laser Twelve. I like the new items a lot. It's so nice to have actually good MR items again. I almost said Mister Items. <laughs> <laughs> I also really like Shadow Flame into squishy teams. You can stack an absurd amount of flat pen between Proto Ludens, yep. Sork Shoes, and Shadow Flame. Dragons and objective bounties are cool, in my opinion, and just a matter of number tuning. Yep. Definitely less volatile than the last preseason with some good quality of life improvements. I can agree I with that. Agree with flame. I actually really like that item. There's a lot of fucking... Yeah, it, I guess it kind of benefits, or it benefits... It kind of evens it out, because you got... Um, I just went blank. Fucking Abyssal Mask... At max stacks with the the magic resist zapping, you'll have like seventy five fucking magic resist, um, and then a force of winter has a lot of magic resist. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, if you can get ahead and you get this early game, if you get early pen, so like yeah, proto belt and Luden's uh, mythic passive gives that pen, mm -hmm. and the sork shoes and the shadow flame. That's a lot. That's a fucking yeah. lot. You're gonna pop some. You're gonna be doing true damage to squishies. Fuck a void staff. You're not even going for You don't even... Things. Yeah, exactly. You don't even need it at that point. Yeah, you can go for the squishies. Because even a squishy with the scimitar doesn't have... And no one builds that item. Uh, yeah, I seriously. Don't... So scimitar, right? What does it give you? 45 MR, I think? You know how much uh, penetration you get between those four items that you just mentioned? It just... Or those three items you just mentioned. Just those three? With Mercurial scimitar, I think it's 45 MR. Um... Sork Boots is 18 magic pen on its own. Um, Shadow Flame at max is 20. Is 20. So it's 38. You, you get five, I think, from per, the path yeah. on whatever. Yep. What is that? You're already looking at 38, 43. You're, you've negated Mercurial Scimitar, and they're back to basically having no MR. Most ADCs are about 35 to 40 base MR. So... When I say that shit is fucking broken, I mean that shit is fucking broken. And like you said, 
No one builds. No ADC is building scimitar Unless right you're now. like literally going against a Skarner or something or Malzahar. That's it. That's what I'm saying. That shit is fucking broken. Because it fucking also comes down to that you need 60% crit to get Infinity Edge. And a lot of ADCs obviously are going to want to build Infinity Edge. So you can't stop. You have to get that 60%. Like, or unless you. It's it, 40% because then the Infinity Edge gives you 20. Scimitar is 20, right? Oh, it. Do, wait, wait. Oh, it does give crit. I believe so. I forgot about that. Okay, never mind. Fuck me, huh? But no, I mean, the point is that's still a fourth item. And it's probably what, 3, 3,200? It gives you, sorry, it gives you 35 MR. I lied. And what? Oh, maybe, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't have crit anymore. Are you looking at the most. We're I'm learning. Pulling right I'm You're pulling right. up right now. Oh, yeah. No, okay. 30 MR, 20% crit, and 40 AV. Okay. That's the latest. So. And what, 3,200? even harder. 30 fucking MR is blown away in. Shadow Flame and Sork Boots. So, yes, true damage. There, you're going to be taking true damage. Well, you'll have your base MR, which is usually about 30, but it doesn't matter. Anyone's base MR, uh, an ADC can get blown up by a mage who's got two, three items if they're at their base MR. He's one spell rotation, like a Syndra. One mm -hmm. spell rotation is going to blow you up. You're dead. So, it's not true damage, but it might as well be because it doesn't fucking matter. Your 30 MR doesn't do shit. I do. I know the other guy said this too, and it's like this preseason was like it was like a, a small DLC from last year. Like it's, it's just different it's than the usual. Little like there's some big changes, but last year was like the big one with the mythic updates. So or changes. So uh, it's interesting. All right, uh, um, moving this down one's from Katia Belly. This one's for you. Enjoying new items. This is for you, dude, particularly Fimble Winter. Fimble Winter! Giving a tier option to tanks like Amumu, Alistar, Taric. I didn't even think about building it on any of those guys. Really? No, I mean... That's the first thing I thought of. These are, like, champions that have the worst fucking mana pools in the goddamn game that actually use the shit out of their mana. It's like, hey, here's a tier item. Have fun. Uh, Axiom Arc is fine in my opinion. Ooh, okay. Uh, people just fuss about anything that increases gameplay pace. It's just there's just champions like Nocturne. Well, he did, he did, he did pull that back a little bit. So with merit, combat is a bit too reflex based for my taste, and that's why people are complaining because it's just fucking combat after combat after combat. And if you're not mechanically gifted like most of us in low elo, this shit fucking sucks. I mean, there's not much you can do against a champion like Nocturne has a point and click R. That's why that's that's the big one. That's the biggest like abuser of that is like, oh, cool, the map's gonna be dark for oh, max rank. It's like what eight seconds, I think, is his darkness. Three times, twenty four seconds in a fight, possibly. That's fucking stupid. That's true. That's true. Crown of the Shattered Queen is a bit too strong if you can hold the passive but balance in low level play since it gets poked off so often before fights. That's fair. I mean, you're going to be doing a lot of fighting. So if, if you're, you know, getting that poke, if you're getting poked, I'm pretty sure when you take damage, that passive resets. Like it goes back so. to 40 seconds, kind of whatever. You, you so. can't, you can't right. take damage for a certain ability. Um, Any nerf to its. No, no, no. If, if it's on cooldown, if you get hit. It doesn't reset the cooldown. It goes all the way through. It's like, um, I think Rakan Shield is like that too. It doesn't reset. Like Malzahar Shield will reset if you get hit. Um, I believe it actually, I believe when we read it, and I'd have to go back and look, I believe it actually completes the process, um, but it can get poked off immediately again. Let me just see. Yep, no, no, no. Uh, restarts upon taking damage from champions. Second cooldown, the 40 seconds. Yeah. So it'll yeah. You just you have to like run around and jack off for forty seconds and not take damage. <laughs> um let's see, any nerf to it uh potency will probably drive it not being picked up outside a high elo pro play, so rock and uh so it's between a rock and a hard place. It's fair. Uh new runes are okay, lethal tempo on melee champ is risk reward. Uh but mm -hmm. tends a bit too rewardy early game. Yeah, so like I've was seeing Warwick, Jax is another good champion. Aurelia, those are fucking insane champions. They just get that fat steroid, like level one, 
super level two early game. And um, I never even thought about it on Warwick, but that was fucking genius. Uh, removing their weakness in the early game dueling. I mean, again, you're going to be trading out. You're just getting attack speed. It's not. Whereas uh, press the attack is a damage buff, and then conquer obviously is a damage buff and a heal. So you you know if you're trading that off. Whereas champions like Warwick who can self heal and apply on hit magic damage. Same thing with Jax and same thing with Aurelia. It's going to be very strong. Yeah, and that, uh, I totally agree with him here. He's like, yeah, you know, the, the weakness of these champions that he just mentioned, Warwick, Jax, Aurelia, is that you annihilate them into the ground at levels 1 through 6. And good fucking luck after that. Kind of like Cassin getting level 16. Uh, he get level 16. You lose the game. Good yeah. luck. Yeah, you can't. Um, no way. It's the, it's the same same kind of thing. So, yeah, you've just you've taken off their weakness um, because you can't set them back if they already have fucking massive attack speed for no fucking reason with no items. So yeah, that's pretty fucking dumb. I won't be surprised if that gets brought down a little bit here in the next patch that I thought notes were going to come out today, but they did not make it out today. So this should be any day now. Hopefully. Um, first strike feels fine, but it has a niche usefulness. 90% of the champs mm-hmm. won't get mileage enough to make it a good pick. Like I said, like a 40... I remember I sent you a picture. I think it was like a 40-minute game as Victor. I think I had like just over a 1,000 gold. I can't remember what the damage was. Um, Yeah, it's... They really like the gold generation shit. Like, I well, mean... Klepto was so popular that it's like... Klepto was just way they too broken. Way to bring that back. It was... They wanted to bring it back, but in a less like RNG manner, whereas Klepto... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Klepto was a little bit more overpowered just because you could get, like, items or consumables. Um, I still miss that. Gangplank with that. Potions. Fucking broken. Okay. Um, item changes are fine. Abyssal Mask is great. I agree with that. It's fucking amazing. Uh, Seraph reframes it more as a support battle mage hybrid item than an AP boost. I'm not sure about that. I don't think I built that. Um, Seraph's the one that gives you a shield now. Oh, that's right. The old one did. And so instead of just um, giving you a full AP boost, like, oh, you get a shield in less of an AP boost. So it, it is a little bit more of like a, a battle mage hybrid. I mean, obviously, it's a Rise, Rise style item. Um, that's exactly what Rise wants. And he's a definition of a fucking battle mage. Um, but it is a little bit more supporty, too. So interesting, interesting take. Uh, there's not one thing that he said here. I disagreed with, by the way. Yeah, just for real. Throwing that out there. Uh, Horizon Focus 2 is now the not not the go-to nuke item. Yeah, they brought that down. Um, I don't see, even in like ARAM games, I've been, I'll be honest, I mainly have just been playing ARAM because there's no point um, to play anything else right now. Maybe some normal no, games. Not, the fucking whole thing's flipped. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing is flipped. Um, yeah, Horizon Focus, I don't see being built that much anymore. It's, it's um, okay. It's still good on Lux. It's good on Lux, good on Zoe, uh, but they That's, brought down all that AP. They, yeah, and if you're playing AP Kaisa uh, in an ARAM, oh, fuck that. It's good, but if you're not playing AP Kaisa, I mean, don't play AP Kaisa in a regular game. Please don't do that. I hope to God you please never do that. I'm sorry you even mentioned it. Um, still good on on AP Kaisa in ARAM. So okay, the rest are the rest of the items are lower impact in total mages. Are getting and a bit make they're getting a bit more bulk in exchange for burst, which I like. It's a little more health. It staves off some of the power creep. I don't know, but like items like Crown of the Shattered Queen, where it's like it gives a lot of like look at the stats of it, and it gives you damage reduction. That needs to get changed. I think that's a little too OP. It's too safe. I mean, I literally see that everyone building that, and they're so fucking champions are so dude. fucking tanky. I fucking hate that item. So overall, they say build path changes are all positive, which I agree with. I was talking about that specifically for Seraph's Embrace, where it's not just a fucking tier needlessly and then like a amp tone. Like that sucks ass. A lot more yeah. smoother building paths. I agree with that. For sure, for sure. Uh, moving on down to Laszlo25. As an ADC main, I'm not noticing much of a difference other than mages with that crown item being ridiculously impossible to kill. Yeah, I think yep. literally lethal would be the only marksman change you could like say. Yeah, it's crazy because I've played mostly in that lane, so I haven't experimented with many of the new items because I'm like, uh, I'm not playing a lane that really uses those, but 
um, I think that's also part of the reason I haven't um, come accustomed to some of these uh, newer items too. Is I'm not playing champions that use them <laughs> as, as a bot lane. You're not seeing too much of a difference. You see a little bit in the so that's about it. Um, Gig Z two G said nothing really changed. Tbh, I know they'll tune the objective bounty, so nothing crazy will be there. Souls are fine, but whatever. Um, mm. Yeah, I even responded back to it. I said, I feel like the item changes were almost geared towards tanks. Um, and I didn't also include mages, just tanks. So I would have been surprised to see that there hasn't... or I have been surprised to see there hasn't been a tank meta that has formed. Especially with Glacial feeling absolutely broken. Because it, it feels fucking broken, dude. I don't know how else to put it. Glacial's fucking stupid. Um... And Gig Z two G did say, yeah, the meta may change, but it's just a meta shift. The game still feels the same. Uh, further saying, Glacial's nuts for team fights and tank items don't sound bad, to be honest. Stacking armor, magic damage reduction, etc., sounds nice. But as of right now, he says nothing's changed. <laughs> Primordial Wander, Camille, and health percentage damage. Would love to know your location. Right, right. Because she has a Cho'Gath alt. On a two second cooldown, as her yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think there was some decent amount of changes. I wouldn't say nothing really changed. There's, there's a good amount that for changed. sure. Um, last couple here, uh, Yuki Mura. Quite frankly, I'm having fun despite some of the items being downright broken. Looking at you, Shattered Crown and Axiom, but it's still fun. The Chem Drake, Chem Drake Soul. Dude, it's so hard to say Chem Drake. I keep wanting to say Chem Drank or Chem <laughs> Tank. Chem Drake Soul needs to be completely changed. It's way too strong. Um, again, I think we've been through that, so we're not going to belabor that point. We agree. Uh, Resold XX said... Okay, I wouldn't have figured that one out. Yeah, I was like, resold? Okay. Uh, stale, in my opinion. New Dragons are okay, I guess. Chem Tank Soul is broken, though. Chem Tank is again. Besides that, it's rather boring. Not much changed. Yeah, um, and and I kind of agree to say I do kind of feel bored with it because Axiom's so OP that everyone's building it and the game is stale in that regard. So I, I can see what he means when he says stale. Like, yeah, everyone's building the same fucking item. It's just... I'm curious. It's kind of silly. I think I'd be curious to know how much, how often or how much these people play. That that would be awesome, too. Because I'm I sure it's different. for people of all, all uh, ranks to uh, respond. So these people may not play as often as others. And then finally, we got a Majin Burrito, who of course said it is pure cancer. I 100% agree. And he said lethal tempo on melee is pure cancer. So top lane is a clown fiesta of random stuff. Again, it's I Yasuo. I'm okay, I'm okay with that though, because top lane oftentimes takes like, oh, there's three champions that play top. So I'm I'm okay with there being a little bit of of a. Uh, of, uh... Uh, at Clown Fiesta or like random stuff in the top side. I think League wants there to be random things everywhere all the time. They don't want it to be like you take Darius top, you go Echo Jungle, Syndra mid, and Vayne Taric bot lane. Like that's what Riot, I think, and everything that Riot does is that's what they're trying to get away from. It they don't like when when metas form and solidify. That's when they like to change things up. Um. That's when they like to really shake things up, and instead of balancing, they debalance things. Um, so I, I disagree with that first part. Although I do think lethal tempo and melee is cancerous, but the clown fist of random stuff I think is exactly what Riot's aiming for. So I, I, I have to disagree with that part of the comment. Um. He does go on to say jungle is still too relevant and obnoxious and too easy to abuse. I can agree with that because, like, yes. you literally don't take any damage in the jungle. Any champion can jungle, it feels like, and they don't. Play Tarek jungle, do you? Want to do it? I've seen, have you seen videos of that shit? This dude plays Tarek with lethal tempo in the jungle, and it's fucking insane. He just cues, auto attack, resets, cues, heals, cues, heals. 
it's pretty what insane. A asshole. <laughs> uh, mobility creep is still bullshit, and it. I'm not entirely sure what that means. It's. I think like. Is that like instead of power creep, it's just like speed? Yeah, because like look at um, dashes. No, look at predator, predator, and um, what the fuck is it called that gives the cool? They buff the cooldown reduction on active items. Is it? um, Oh my god, what's it fucking called? It's ravenous, uh, not hunter. Oh, uh, ingenious. Yeah, ingenious hunter. I used to love that one, and then, and then some of the actives weren't as good, and now. The actors are good again. Because Predator is like fucking open. It gives you flat 20 item ability haste. And then I think it's like six stacks per champ or yeah, per, per champion. So another 30 at max five. So 50 ability haste. On an item. On an active item. So Predator is up all the time. Uh okay. yeah, there's a lot of movement speed. Um new bounty new bounties are broken, even though are nowhere near to the old bounties. Yeah, I I think they're getting better. The few games I've played, they don't, um, cause like before you're seeing teams that were winning get bounties. I think they're kind of figuring it out. Hopefully, hopefully the patch comes and they can like, just maybe, maybe they just need to explain it a little bit better. I don't know. It's, I feel like what they explain makes sense. It's just the action of them does not. That makes sense. Like I feel like the way they explained it, I get it. I don't have any problem understanding it. Why is the winning team getting back? Yeah, that's what I don't understand. <laughs> that's, that's what doesn't make sense. So, um, he said itemization still feels like shit, and there's almost no variety. I do agree that the variety lacking. Um, because every mid lane mage like the, is every mage yeah. is building queen of, uh shattered crown. Crown of Strider Queen, yeah. Uh, no, I do agree that like all the ADCs build the same items. All the, uh, the dude, the biggest fucking item diversity is in the support role because you can, depending who you're playing, it could be Shirelia's, it could be um, Leandri's if you're playing a damage carry in support. Uh, that's got the the most um, diversity, but. You're playing a damage carry, you're building the damage items that are the same as the mid lane mages. So you do lose diversity in, in that regard. So I see I still see what you're saying. Um I don't quite understand what you're saying at the back end where it says mana champions are still playing a different game. I think it's just it feels explanation. It feels bad when you're going against like manaless champs. Oh like fucking Riven. And they just stack fucking ability haste. Which is dumb. I agree with that, and I do agree that ability haste on mana based champions still is almost. Yeah, you can use your spells more frequently, but you can also rip through your mana more frequently too. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, so that makes sense. It's hard. It's hard. Um, I think that's about that's about it for these. So yeah, I think that's a good spot to to wrap up on. Um, guys, you know the drill. Follow that new Twitter page with that new beautiful artwork. Mm-hmm. Follow that YouTube. Subscribe, like, ring the bell. You can find our Instagram with brand new artwork. Mm-hmm. Um, also, is where I post video updates and try to create some engagement through the stories. Um, if there's anything you guys would like to see on that platform, please let me know. I'm happy to figure something out. Yeah, man, we just want to hear from you guys, and that's it. We that's it. And, that, what uh, you just said is 600% true. And uh, like I said, our poll down below, if you're on Spotify, is uh, what do you think is the most impactful and or broken lane role at the moment? And uh, the question is, what are your thoughts on preseason? Simple as that. So uh, we will, we'll see you next week. Later. Peace.